everybody. It's I'm Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this morning. So we have another enhancers for severe weather we're going to talk about today. We are keeping an eye on everything else. We have the tropics to talk about, but nothing's formed in the Bay of Campeche just yet. So 100% focus on this one today. Hope everyone again is doing well and having a good start to the morning here by the time you're seeing this video. So couple things to make note of we do have an enhanced risk for hail and damaging winds these both have significant parameters with it represented by this hatched risk right here in the black so we could see winds greater than 70 miles an hour and hail greater than two inches in diameter this is gonna mainly take place during the later part of the evening here there also is a five percent tornado threat towards southern Iowa western Illinois and then also parts of northern Missouri. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Also, let's not discount anyone's in that 2% area. So we have to watch Michigan as well as parts of northern Indiana, of course, the areas we mentioned prior. And even parts of western Kansas could be in the mix here too. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and take a look at our kinematics first here. So looking at our wind profile, one thing that I've made note of here is pretty much been the same old song and dance, so to speak. It's really been more so short waves that have been kind of firing off these storm systems more so than just a mega trough itself. We've been talking about this for a while. It's going to pretty much continue to be the case here. I do see signs of maybe another short wave that pops up a little bit later in the evening, becoming a little bit more prominent as we get further beyond here, represented by these isobars having a ripple in them like you see here. So that's why I'm anticipating a lot of activity, also seeing a lot of diffluence as well to help go along with that. Storms could persist a little bit later into the evening here, but I think by that point they'll start to lose some steam. I do think the threat will be a little bit more of a long duration event in comparison to last night's event. In any case though, looking at our actual level where the short waves would be developing and are easy to see you can it's pretty clear already it looks like it's like i said by mid to late afternoon we start to see our first signs of development and it really kind of ramps up from that point and beyond here the most prominent activity i think is going to be just at sunset here so depending on how that low level jet looks we could get a good chance for at least a few tornadoes here like i said i think the most favorable area right now it's definitely looking like we're going to see it towards the iowa and missouri border here but like i said it's really going to be the presence of that low level jet if anything right now though is an indicator it looks like it's going to be more off towards like western parts of illinois here so with that being said it might mitigate the tornado threat there are other parameters in play that could maybe help push things along but Right now, things are kind of looking pretty tame on the tornado threat. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I see in the uh, current five percent threat at this moment in time. So as we keep moving here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at, of course, our thermos here, the thermodynamics towards the surface, in particular the dew points. So our dew points are going to be pretty ample here. We're getting plenty of sixty and seventy degree dew points. Crops are helping with that. But as we get later into the evening, I do notice a slight little surge in moisture here towards the central part of the of that yeah, my brain's not working. Central part of Missouri here. You can see these little specks of purple here. Those are 70 degree, degree dew points, and those don't really pop up until later into the evening. So get a little push from the Gulf of Mexico here to kind of help aid these storms along, and that's gonna also help. A lot for enough instability to keep these storms going for just a little bit longer and maybe even keep them intense eventually of course as we get later in the evening and into tomorrow morning things start to kind of drop off a bit so looking at the temperatures to go along with that like i said we're going to have a very unstable atmosphere it's no question about it the temperature spread is one thing that's going to work against that tornado threat just a little bit here you want to see the surface temperatures a little bit more a little closer to the surface dew points and we're just not really going to see that and there you go all you got to do is look at this QT here not really anything super 
anything super complicated. We have a surface temperature of 92, dew point of 68 here. If this was closer together, you would have more concern of tornado threat. This is definitely kind of leaning into more of a damaging winter from the looks of things. That, and we just don't have a lot of low-level jet available. Think, think of it like this. Tornadoes are surface-based. Damaging winds are downburst. It's a little bit different. But in any case, though, if we were to go ahead and take a look at some of our favorite parameters, main thing that really kind of captures my and this is pretty common for this time of year is the instability here or cape convective available potential energy where we have plenty of ample cape to start out the evening here especially as these storms start to fire around 21 22 z so this would be again right around mid to late afternoon where these storms start to pick up in intensity and as time goes on eventually we do start to lose that energy but we do have enough to help keep them going for a little bit longer here I think the lack of wind shear might slow this event down just a little bit more, but not by much here. In any case, though, like I said, low level shear is not that impressive today. We'll take one more map. We'll take this one map here to kind of display that. And like I said, it's really not until like later in the evening where you see these little sneaky pockets here in the bulk shear that kind of match up with that area of interest that I've been talking about here and it doesn't really pick up until those storms go into more of a linear mode so like I said it this setup really kind of favors damaging winds at this point like I said we could still get a few tornadoes I think yesterday was probably going to be the more favorable day out of the two but we'll see how things develop from that point here and things really get going with this first line of storms that pops up here Get this MCS to develop here, and this is going to actually cause some severe weather here, even over towards Chicago, possibly. And then from that outflow boundary, these new storms will end up popping up, and it's these that we'll have to watch here. I do think that there could be a slight chance that they end up moving that 20 other thread off to the east here to include parts of western Illinois. And then as time goes on, like I said, storms begin to weaken because we start to lose that daytime heating and all that instability starts to go to wait, go away here at this point. We'll have to see how things develop from that point and we'll go on from there. But in any case though, hope you guys are staying safe. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you later tonight. Till then, it's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have an awesome rest of your day.